Welcome everybody to Surviving Frank's Neverwinter Open Beta Review that has been long overdue and I'm sorry I'm glad that you've been patient with me but here we go. I know my mug was supposed to be on screen but my mug's absent because of the technical problems I was having so maybe I'll do my mug in another video for you to adore. <laughs> But anyway, make sure to like the video and see if we can hit 10 likes on the video with some thumbs up. That would be fantastic. And also subscribe so YouTube can be subscriber of the day with an annotation link to subscriber of the day at the end of this video. And that could be you. But anyway, this is a uh, lot of information to do, so let's go ahead and get into it. The game that I am reviewing is Neverwinter. Like I said, it's an open beta, so I'm not going to give it a final review rating because things can change at launch. But I will tell you my opinion over top of some gameplay for it. So, if you're unfamiliar with Neverwinter, it's actually a city based in the land of the Forgotten Realms from the D&D Dungeons & Dragons franchise owned by Wizards of the Coast. So, that is a little background information for the game. It's also developed by Cryptic Studios in partnership with Hasbro Entertainment and, of course, Wizards of the Coast, with the publisher being Perfect World, who has published games like Star Trek Online. So, one of the biggest questions is, is this game a quest of epic proportions, or is this game a type of quest that you would easily forget? But anyway... The answer to some of those questions can be answered in gameplay, so let's get to it. One of the biggest things about the gameplay of this game is it really removes that cookie cutter classic MMO feel to it. It adds action styles that keeps the player engrossed in the action to where you can't pack a picnic and sit there and auto attack. There is no auto attack or auto block or anything like that. This is an MMO where action is necessary. So there will be big boss attacks that you might want to block if you have the shield and play in the champion class. Or you might want to duck and roll if you're the rogue class or slide out of the way with the cleric class. Because the dodge mechanic has different visual styles depending on the character you're playing with. Also, the game seems to have that really close-knit tie to Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition. Not only in gameplay, but in story, which I will touch on that a bit later. But... It's basically, it's got that whole style to it, you know, where you got your encounters, your at wheels, your dailies, which are built up by you dealing damage and taking damage, which builds up the gauge for it. So it's kind of cool in the sense that it does have that D&D 4th edition, and I do enjoy it quite a lot. If you're not a big fan of D&D 4th edition, then you're probably not going to find a lot to like here, unless you're liking or playing the game for some other reason in general. Um, the classes. The classes of this game is where it kind of falls a little bit flat for me. And the reason why I'm going to go ahead and put that out there is because the solo uh, role for the classes are boring as all get out. Cleric has to be the most boring, but all the other ones are just as boring in some respects. This uh, game falls into that traditional MMO style of you need that tank, DPS, and healer. And if you don't have that, well, you're just SO well. And if you got good friends though, this game is going to be freaking fantastic. You're going to have a good time with all your friends with that. The Foundry mechanic, which is um, a way for players to create player-generated content for other players to enjoy. So the uh, company gives you the tools that they use to build the game within the game to create more content. Definitely good for the longevity and replayability of the game. But it's really bad when you have to abandon the quest because you can't turn it in and have to redo it again. But overall, the feature was a very welcome addition to an MMO, and I hope more MMOs decide to do this in the future. But it is buggy, and I'm sure that will be worked out at full release. Storyline-wise, if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons and 4th Edition, Forgotten Realms, and uh, Neverwinter, and the Spell Plague, and things like that, you're going to fall in love with the storyline. Great care was taken here. It's just, I have just recently got into D&D, so I'm a bit behind and a bit... Um, kind of like, wait, what is going on here type thing. So it's a bit vague for me, and that's just because I'm all new to the whole D&D &D aspect. Presentation-wise, your big question is probably, did Cryptic take good care of the license? Yes, they did. There is a really good care put into the landscapes people in that classic D&D lore. The only thing that was horrible with the game was launch day for me in the open bay of Sydney night. A little over half a day to get in to even do the first look for the other solid place and link to those in the description. Server lag was bad too. Once I got all excited and got in and realized that I was just gonna, you know, 
kind of moving sometimes and kind of not. Which I'm pretty sure they just didn't expect that many people to be in the open beta, so probably won't be too bad of an issue come launch today. Um, another thing that just kind of was out of place, random and strange, and just kind of sucked me out of the experience, since this NPC character didn't have a Dungeons and Dragons type name. This NPC character's name was Fuck Me. I guess maybe somebody over at Cryptek didn't care about his job and didn't want to work there anymore or something. Because that was just strange. It's something strange I wanted to mention. Kind of weird, kind of funny, but it just jerked me from the experience a bit. Um, it's just... Uh, I feel like the presentation left a little bit too desired. On to the final verdict. The final verdict of the game is for all you big Dungeons & Dragons fans who to adore the game as far as the game to be the lore, which was pretty how great care was taken for that setting. Um, the setting that I don't particularly like is the solo. There, there really is no really good thing to say about soloing as a class. It's better to be in a group, and that's just all there is to it. The action in this game, the action combat, isn't truly revolutionary, but it does add a neat spin on things and maybe a uh, better, you know, kind of a feature for the MMO style and genre. Um, the game, as well, is an open beta, so I don't know if it has released yet, but during this video and the time of this video, it has been done based on the written review, so the written review will contain more information that you'll probably want to know, and there will be a link for that down below, in case you're interested in that. But, the final verdict for the game, I would say, is, if you're a hardcore person, hardcore fan of D&D, I would say go ahead and play it now. But, if you're just looking for a new MMO to play, I would wait until the full release. But anyway, I appreciate all of you, and I thank you for watching. Make sure to check out Subscriber of the Day, and follow me on Tumblr and Twitter if you haven't.